for this very daughter just going to get the boys from the hood on. Get the boys from the dwarf bar, come on! <laughs> Say me and Chris were talking the other day, and he wished he kept his Mr. Flibble, but he didn't. He kept the gingham dress instead. <laughs> Can I just say, um, my friend made this for me, and I'm really proud of her. So <laughs> she's in here somewhere. Nikoya, thank you so much, you star. Let's Sorry, made the outfit or Mr. Flibble? Ah, uh, okay. Very good. Very good. It's like something I didn't roll it down a trousers and put it, make it short. It's, it's like right something from Take Heart. Sorry? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, get episode from the new series. Episode. I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in. Okay, and jump in. And say lemons. <laughs> lemons. But I might be proved wrong. Oh, yeah. I might watch another one and go, no, that's better than lemons. What do you Shall I jump in? You jump in. Okay. I'll jump in, give you a bit more thought time. Mm-hmm. Um, I... I think lemons is also very good, and I'd say that's definitely one of my best. But there's something about the beginning that I quite like. So I'm going to go for that one. I also think Trojan is good, and I think Father and Sons is very good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Father and Sons I really like, and uh, I think it'll be a Dave as well. Yeah, Dave. Which is good. And there's another one called Entanglement, which is... I mean, do you know what? Oh, they're all quite funny, you know? They're all funny. They are, they are quite they're funny. They're all pretty good, but we're nitpicking here, yeah. we like to think, you know? But, uh, it depends what bears the test of time, really, you know? I mean, once we... Because I've only seen them a couple of times, you know? So when you see it a bit more, you go, oh, you know... Can I ask you, are you coming to uh, next year's Norcon? Are we coming to where? Are you doing um, anything for Norwich Science Fiction Club? Oh, no, Norcon next year? I think, well, I mean, we might all, I mean, it would be good if we all got there. I don't know if we can, we'll have to see. It's work permitting. Where, where's the weather we're last night? Well, Norcon is in Norwich. Oh, Norwich? Norwich. Is it Norwich? From Norwich, it's the quiz of the week. <laughs> it's the quiz of the week. It's the quiz of the week. We're so old. We're <laughs> so old. Nicholas Parsons. And 
for five pounds. <laughs> it has whatever it was. <laughs> John Benson, what's our first instant sale? Go on, it rolls back. Thank you. Uh, thank you, ma'am. She leaves non the wiser. <laughs> non the wiser. Ah. Ah. Hello. I'm looking in a mirror. <laughs> Rather bizarre, but uh, yeah. Another one of your brothers is there, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I grew up watching your show, and um, I was uh, recapping recently in the run up to the new series, and I was wondering, um, what would you think, uh, for all the recordings, were the hardest scenes for you to film? I'm just wondering, is it really hard for you to stand like that for ages? It is. Isn't your own getting really tired? It'll be like that. I don't know if you practice. It'll be, it'll be, it'll be filming our boots for someone who's going to find out if you can't. Or possibly the floor. Camera flop in the films. Uh, Actually, the one thing that was really hard for Robert was a scene that he did with Danny uh, in Entanglement where they get quantum entangled, as you do, uh, only on the draw, and they have to deliver all their lines simultaneously, and there's a there's reams and reams of this stuff. But one of, one of the best record. scenes ever recorded in Red Dwarf, I think. Absolutely brilliant. Oh, that's really that was really brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. I mean, it was quite hard because with the, <coughs> the two words, Danny and rehearsal, very rarely yeah. can be used in the yeah. same yeah. sentence. Yeah. As in, I'm rehearsing, where's Danny? Yeah. Yeah. He's on the phone, he's tweeting, he's reading the newspaper. Mm. So it was the first, what you see on the screen is effectively, quite genuinely, the first and the only performance of that thing ever. And it was so super good. I mean, Danny awesome. was, awesome. was extraordinary. No, he's a genius. I, I think also a lot of the scenes that we, we have to record with ourselves. So way, way back when I was doing me squared and the two runners were competing with each other, they're always quite difficult because you've got to remember what you've done. Right. Uh, and then with Ace as well, you know, those sort of things. And for you... And I did a, in this series today, the next episode, next Thursday, is a thing called Fathers and Sons, where I get to meet my own dad and we all know that Liz is his own dad so I had to do a lot of scenes uh, with myself I to play with myself <laughs> and I volunteered and it was lovely <laughs> um, so yeah they were quite difficult because I had the flu when I was doing that as well which made it harder and I had to drink about 17 gallons of apple juice which made it harder still but uh, hopefully it's really funny and um, uh, very good very good thank very you very much it is extraordinary. A, a quite extraordinary uh, portrayal of inebriation, which Craig does with enormous skill. I have strong memory, you know, <laughs> distant, distant memory. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Didn't drop the box. Uh, this is a question for Rob. When I was in secondary school, there was quite a legendary story about you among the teachers and students. It was allegedly that when you were in your second year, you mooned out a window at a teacher and got expelled. Is that true? <laughs> which, which school? Uh, the Henry Box School in Whitney. Is Whitney. that where you went? Yes, it is. <laughs> is that where you went? Um, I, I did. Oh, and yes. <laughs> but the, what the story was that I mooned at a teacher. Apparently, out of a, I think it was a science room or something, you saw a teacher go past that you didn't like, so you hung your bottom out the window. No, and I you were caught. I, did, I, I, was, I can't deny that I was expelled. Can I ask and why? And the boy he also can't deny that he's hung his bottom up a lot of windows. I have done that, <laughs> but never at school. But, um, but with us, uh, Shepperton changing rooms. Yes. Yeah. 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 In Shepperton Studios, my bottom's generally on display. But, um, <laughs> what we did do, and I certainly got a lot of trouble for, was with a, 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 a school friend of mine, Pete, Pete Toft, he's called. He was well out. He joined the Royal Marines. He was very successful in the Royal Marines. He was a very big, strong man, and we held a, we did a physics experiment where we held a very large plastic bag full of water out of a second floor window, and when a teacher walked past, we dropped it. And if they didn't hit that teacher, I think it might have killed him. It wasn't a small bag. It was an enormous, like, sack. And, we, and he got very wet, but thankfully it didn't land on his head and break his neck. So I was quite badly behaved in my latter years. Earlier on, I was an exemplary student. I mean, I get the reputation, but he's really badly behaved now, to be honest. You know. The job of the teacher, look, it's just a front. <laughs> but Henry Box rocks. It does indeed. <laughs> and just one more question. Do you miss Robot Wars? Do I miss Robot Wars? Let's bring Robot Wars back. That's all I'm saying. Robot Wars! Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, yeah, kind of. I mean, it did get very dangerous towards the end, though. I mean, the reason it was kind of canned in the end was health and safety got involved when one of the robots, one of the robots was on the same frequency as a local minicab fan. <laughs> he went bizarre and stuck an axe in the top of the first assistant director's Timberland boot, and it came out through his heel and started spinning them around. And um, <laughs> so it was getting very violent towards the end. And these things are massive, you know. They look like little toy cars on the telly, but like when you stand next to them, they're vicious. So uh, if they could make it safer, yeah, because these macaron screens, which are supposed to be bomb proof, were getting, the robots were getting hailed against them and they were all cracking. <laughs> Imagine hitting the disc on the audience's lap. There'd be limbs everywhere. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, guys. Thanks for seeing this. Hi there, got a question from Robert again. Um, I've once heard... Sometimes he's a very, very interesting man, of course, Robert, so uh, I'm not surprised again. Tell me about your school years. <laughs> you didn't get a Henry Box, did you? No, I didn't. He's the teacher. <laughs> I once heard, um, and please don't be offended by this, that you believe your Crichton mask is actually more attractive than you in real life. <laughs> no, it's not. I'm not the slightest bit offended. In, uh, without question, I think Crichton is chiselled and handsome. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a face like an uncooked fray bentos pudding, so I'm really, I'm really proud of Crichton. He's a very good looking chap. Yeah, I'm not offended at all. See, we'll give you one question right there. I don't want one question right there. I've got it in my mouth, waking up with quite Crichton sweating on top of me. <laughs> just because he's getting more questions, yeah. it's not always it's the best thing. It's really. the quality of the question, Chris. <laughs> exactly. exactly. We're, we're going to get a question anytime soon. This is going to be a very quality, complimentary question. Here you go. Where, where do you hear? Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty new to Red Dwarf. But I've, I've sat through every episode and I love it, I just, I've got to say. A question in general, which is your favourite series? Favourite series? I'm, I, do you know what, I'm going to go out on a limb. Go out on a limb here. And I'm going to say Red Dwarf 10. <laughs> hey! That's a limb. That's a big limb to go out on a limb. I'm on the ledge. I'm on the edge of the limb. I think the only thing that Chris and I can do to support you on that is to get out there and help support that limb. <laughs> That makes any sense. Are you going to jump in? Crutch. <laughs> Not my crutch. <laughs> Are you going to jump in, Bob, or go out on the limb? I think, well, I mean, I would say, you know, that I would always have said in the past, four, five, six, somewhere around one of those, five, four, four, five. But now, see, having seen series ten, it's really hard. I think they're as, they're as good as any of those. So there's at least three episodes in series ten that I've put in my top ten all-time record yeah. episodes. That's what I'm saying. I think we're going to let, personally, I'm going to let series 10 settle in and I'm going to go for three, which was the last of the Manchester uh, yeah, yeah, that was series classic. and four, the first of the um, Shepparton series. So three and four for me. I think that's a very good, well-balanced question. We've covered that. Very good question, young man. Yeah, yeah. question, sir. Ooh. In 1971, there was a Swedish man, and he swears into a drink. What do you think caused the accident? It's probably a bug. On the accident, I'd say 40 wheel nuts. Ice on the road. Ice on the road. <laughs> probably with a brake hydraulic step. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. um, what was the hardest episode you've ever had to film where you make each other laugh, the most difficult thing that you're all laughing about. Ah, uh, well, there's been, there's been a lot of them. Well, well these guys, it's always difficult to see. <laughs> 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 I remember once we were on a lake, uh, oh, rowing, yeah. rowing up these big sheets of flame firing up out of this lake. Was it Rimmerworld? What was the Rimmerworld? Yeah, and we're on the, I'm paddling in this canoe, kind of kayak thing. Big shoots of flame flying up, and they say, "Don't go near the flame." And I go, "No, no, 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 no." I get as close to the flame as I possibly can. as a shoe, look like that, look like that, and light and light and light. <laughs> off a thirty-foot-high flame from a tippy boat at night in a lake. <laughs> and I, and I, I love that. I had my full quite gear on, and I said to Peter Ray, the lovely, much missed special effects man, I said, "How well do you think I'll be able to swim in this?" And he went, "I'll be right here and catch you." <laughs> 
there's just no way you could see the triangle. I think in uh, one of the most difficult was Dimension Jump in Series 4, when they had this huge Volkswagen engine powered wind yeah. machine. Yeah. And we were out trying to fix the ship or that something. That was the water. And they put the water, and basically the water was blowing into our fire engines, you know, fire engine and hoses. We were having to do dialogue, and the, the engine was, the water was coming out of such volumes and with such force that as soon as we kind of opened our mouths, we nearly drowned. That is true. It's true, honestly. Well, fact, I think you pissed someone off that day because they were aiming at you. Every, yeah, time, yeah, yeah. every time you went to spew, they yeah. put the hose on you. And they kept saying, it's Ace, he can do this. <laughs> but it was Chris Barry, and he was suffering badly. And at the end of it, I was saying, have you got it there? <laughs> and Doug was saying, it looked, yeah, 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 no, it looks great, let's do another one. Yeah. Right. Actually, there was also, was that season eight? Or seven or eight, where, where the last, on the last day's filming, we did the thing with the, and the fire department came to shove it in with the, and we were pushed down the Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and was, because that was the, 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 it's when you hear the plan. Duck soup, wasn't it? Duck soup. Duck soup. Duck soup. Well, we, we kind of were caught by this railing of the fire and water, and like we're supposed to be doing dialogue, and we are, we are actually being waterboarded, really. Yeah. <laughs> it was like being waterboarded. But we, we were all saying, you know, we were all sitting on a little trolley on tracks, mm -hmm. and the idea was that the, the, the force of the water would move us along, and they went, oh, it probably won't, we'll have to pull you. Mm -hmm. And so then five burly firemen with massive fire hoses that yeah. could shoot over this building stood right behind us and went, alright! <laughs> it did work. We were pushed along by water very fast. <laughs> I remember when we did backwards, I had to walk into a lake backwards and then they reversed the film and I walked out and I was dry at the end. Uh, so I walked backwards into the lake, being very brave, and uh, all the, uh, there was a back swell which is a silt at the bottom of this lake and, we, and, and the groups got stuck in the water and I can hear them shout an action, this little thing like that, and I just can't get me uh, and the bubbles are coming up like that and then a lovely piece of rag came and uh, rescued me because I was drowning, I couldn't get out of the sea. <laughs> you know, so that was difficult. Demons and angels, all that garb I was wearing. I don't know what it looked like, but it was bloody painful to wear. <laughs> uh, you chose that outfit. <laughs> no, I mean, it was rather tight and there were some pins left in it, which is never a good thing. Yeah, Demons and Angels was, I think, tough for everyone. But it was good. Yeah, I, I found you highly attractive in that outfit. Did you? Did you? Yeah, I wanted to take me home and beat me to an inch of my life <laughs> and then do it again. <laughs> yes, I, I, I had a few offers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> moving on, moving on. Thank you very much. Um, two parts. Uh, first one, could you do the River Salute? I'm sure Ooh. everyone would love to see it. The River Salute. Would you, do you want the short, medium or long? <laughs> the long, the long. You do the long. Well, I don't want to be long because we, 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 we can get out of here. <laughs> Whatever you think. Absolutely. Um, genuine question for all of you guys. Um, working together for so long, um, for such long times, um, there must be practical jokers on set. I would imagine all of you have your fair share of stories. Are there any practical joke stories or annoyances that you've ever had of like, people uh, messing with you on set? Whoa. Anyone Whoa. that you can mention, anyway. <laughs> A lot of that needs to be kept private, to be honest. <laughs> Oh. I mean, the, well, the, the, the one that is uh, tragic on my own part is that Craig has a, a I think, unfair, uh, <coughs> an uncanny ability to learn lines like that very quickly. So he's off the page of the script within the first day that we get it. Um, on day 107, I've just about learned the first sentence. And then Craig will walk up to me just before we shoot, and I'm looking at my lines on my script. It's all very carefully marked out. It says Robert on the front so nobody nicks it. And he says, oh, Robert, can I just see? I don't know what we're doing. And he takes my script, walks over to a bin, sets fire to it, <laughs> and he's done it every episode for the last 24 years. And I still have a story. I was like, what did he do, Craig? And I'm trying to be helpful, middle class. And when we were outside drinking coffee like that, I'd have finished mine, I'd go like that. Uh, hold that towards me, Robert. I'll just copy you. Hold it. And I'll just walk off like that. And you've got the empty cup. But, Bobby, he always knew that changes were coming. 
Yes. <laughs> 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 we get another script. Oh, no. So, explain it. Yeah, there's no, uh, I suppose, practical, there's no... Well, to be honest, we all despise each other, and like, we just go to our separate dressing room, <laughs> and the only time we ever meet is when you call us in for action. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, the practical jokes are played on us. Yeah, there's plenty yeah. of that going on. That's when you learn a whole half-hour script in, like, uh, in the dress rehearsal, they say, no, throw that one away, here's a new one. <laughs> That's happened. Uh, that and a lot. Thank you. Hi there. Uh, my question is for Chris. Um, throughout the, the ten series now, um, you go through a lot of costume changes. In the first two, you like a uh, lad's got on there, you like a suit on, and then you go to like the green rolling one, the red rolling one. Just want to watch your favourite. <laughs> Apart from the uh, demons and angels thing, of course. Apart from the demons and angels. Do you know? I think my favourite is probably the original Rimmer series one scripts because <laughs> it, it's just a, it's just basic normal space core thing. And all the, I mean, I love the other ones, but, but to me they're I don't know that they're spacey, so they're also nod to TV lands, you know. Whereas that's proper, you know, space core kit. But look, I mean, I, we've used variations of the same one right the way through to series ten, you know, for, for many many years now. So. Uh, no, I, I like them all, really. A, um, psych a psychiatrist would say that you, uh, you, you kind of psychologically, you're, you're hankering to be, be alive again. You want Rimmer to be uh, alive. Yeah. See, that's what a psychologist would say. That's why you like that one. Uh, or just comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, that's just conventional outfits, more comfortable, you know. That, that was the one area where the British Empire won over Red Dwarf. Mark Suspenser, trousers, slip-ons, and shirts, and blazer. Damn company. I prefer you in polyester. <laughs> Go to Rosebury, especially for you, my dear boy. Thank you. Um, I have a question for all of you. Craig has been quoted as saying that his memories of season one are in grey. Have any of you had a black and white dream? Oh. You, you, apparently you said that your memory, you, the memory, his memory of season one is red and white. Yes. It's black and white. Red. Is it black and white? No. But what I mean is like, uh, what, I, what I think what I meant uh, for that is like, there was so much grey and um, stuff like that. There wasn't much colour, there, was, there wasn't much colour in it, you know. And then, um, and then obviously later on it became a bit more razzy. They, they kind of went out of their way to make everything three shades of grey. Yeah. You know, standard grey, dark grey, military and ocean. military grey, ocean grey, battleship grey. Yeah. So it ended up looking sort of monochrome the whole thing, you know? Yeah. But it, well, that wasn't the intention. Um, but a few people are saying to us now, oh, I remember you in the black and white days. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> 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 That's good. Well, that steamship in space. <laughs> <laughs> we probably haven't answered your question at all, but, um, uh, Robert. Um, what, do, uh, did you ask, do we dream in black and white? Dream in black and white. Oh, blimey. I don't, I can't, I don't think I have. I actually have, you know. And it was, when I went, I was put under at the dentist, um, for, uh, to have a tooth out. It was in the old days when they put you under sort of thing. And, um, and I dreamt in black and white that I'd got up and escaped from the dentist and run out the door. And it was a black and white dream. That's weird that you've asked that, because you just broke in the dream. Wow. <laughs> I've actually seen in black and white, but that was after I was thrown off a horse and landed on my head. And when I came round, uh, everything was black and white. And I went, oh my god, I'm seeing it in black and white, it's really good. And very slowly, colour sort of seeped in. It was quite disturbing. But I don't think that was a dream, unfortunately. It was a very sore head. Because every only sees of white at home, there's no black people in this village. <laughs> <laughs> you let you in once. <laughs> <laughs> it was this is like 20 years ago. It's very famous visit in his Rolls Royce. And it's Mrs. Um, no, Mrs. Mrs. Rogers who runs the post office. Then she don't see his retired name. She's still alive. But I still see her now in the village every now and then. She goes, oh, I remember when that young man came in his Rolls Royce and he said, where does Robert live? I'm going to go and burgle his house. I can't help it. <laughs> I can't help myself. He just walks into the question. Where does Bobby go on in there? I've got a bird for his house. I can't help myself. <laughs> <laughs> and no, I, I, all my dreams are in colour. 
HD. High definition. Serious accidents happening on set? Serious accidents? Um, once I got, well, not serious, you know, a few eggs, a few eggs and planes, a few bruises. Once he punched me in the back of the head in Demons and Angels. Yeah. Where I'm sitting, I'm hiding against the wall like that, doing a scared Heidi act. Uh, uh, and he, he's supposed to punch through the wall and grab me. Uh, and uh, so he punched through the wall right through the back of the head. Who is this? Uh, Demons and Angels. Do you yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I received stars. <laughs> that was bad. The, the wall was marked on the back. Like the two big crosses you've got to punch. I couldn't see Craig at all. Yeah. You've got to punch at either of these. Yeah. So I just went, but his head was right in front of one of the crosses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that but, um, was slightly painful. Not really. No, I've yeah. not had really any serious accidents. I've been very lucky, really. I mean, you, you did quite a few of your own stunts, Craig. So yeah. Remember that one where Norman Lovett said, oh, was it the blue? You know, when he's doing the, um, the wiring and, and it explodes. That was quite were... scary, that, actually, to do, because it was a big console that I had to clear, and they brought me a little sort of trampoline. So basically, I had to jump on the trampoline, but I land on the trampoline in the same way I was standing. So you didn't really get, you couldn't really get your bent your knees to get any bounce. And then you had to clear this, uh, this console, but, um, I did it, I didn't, I didn't hit anything, but uh, and it was just in front of the explosion as well, so stuff like that, a bit of adrenaline. Yeah. I mean, in Starbuck, where we had some... Uh, oh, oh that, that, that was quite right. Uh, I saw the pyrotechnics got a bit close, you know, I thought, what are they going to do here? Yeah. And Danny got, Danny got, Danny got bad bruises. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so all the way down at one side of the space, because we're, we're, me and Danny are like, staying inside talking, there's a big, it's called a woofer which explodes all this kind of shrapnel and stuff out. And we're talking like that, and Danny, his timing was off, because I turned like that, and Danny was supposed to turn like that, but Danny stayed there, and it went BANG! Hit him in the side of the head, yeah. yeah. And it was quite the, serious. Yeah. It, it hit the back of my, I mean, it hurt, but not, it wasn't dangerous, but they were picking bits of plastic out of the mask on the back. That's like, so it, it actually stuck in. Mm -hmm. I was, and we had to do, you know, top quality, obviously, top quality red dwarf explosion acting, where you go, that. Well, we didn't have to do any acting. Yeah. I just sat there and suddenly I was over there. You know? <laughs> it was very powerful. Yeah. One serious cock up was when, uh, when uh, Series 7 when Crichton blew up the gazebo with the tank. Um, but we had a great idea. Let's get the army to do it for us. Right. So the army built an explosion for us and it shattered all the windows <laughs> in the army village, in, in the barracks. So then you had a load of pretty angry squaddies coming over the fence going, oh, what are you doing? We, we realised the true power of the British army wife that day when they stormed over because yeah. their front rooms are covered in shattered glass. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, normally when they do an explosion on, a, on telly it's, it's flash powder and petrol and it, make, it doesn't make any noise, it just goes whoop like that and it looks spectacular but, but they've used I think something like 30 metres of Sentex ribbon. Yeah. <laughs> if they were really up for it they are. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. Like and we were over at the ornamental lake so we're about, I'm sorry, we must be about 50 yards away yeah, from at least, it yeah. and, I could, and you could feel the, 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 the wave come through. Yeah. No, it caused a lot of screams. The ducks definitely took off and started <laughs> flying around. Yeah. Well, I wish I'd been there. Fire? The tree caught fire. We blew the top of a tree off. The <laughs> whole, whole top of one tree just like, you haven't invited us back, but no. <laughs> I like how it started with just, no, oh, no accidents, and now we've just gone off. Yeah. Now, oh, all these accidents. Oh, well, there's loads of, re we're real hardened space. It's like we're getting so old now, our memories take a while to kick yeah. in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> rattle, they have them, rattle. You want to see mine lick that? <laughs> also, I was wondering, uh, could you do just a quick hello to the two girls in Norway, where I come from? Um, Katina and Christina, who introduced me to the series, just say quick hello. Or and their names are Katina and Christina. Katina and Christina. Christina, not Christina. Just say hello. Oh. Hello. 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 Christina and Christina. Right. Right. Katina and Christina. See, we're very good at names. <laughs> uh, okay. so, hello. Keep watching. Hope you enjoy series ten. Bye. 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 Um, at the end, um, sorry, I'm not even saying how yet, 
Sorry. Uh, to put the right toast to your mouth. Yeah. Um, if Pugsmen can't smoke with having to carry it, at the end, was the clothes actually sick? Well, it's quite sick. And was all of the action real, or were they cut off both actually? Oh, do you remember when we did Can't Smoke, Won't Smoke with Ainsley? Yes. And then did Chloe came in and tasted the curry we cooked. Yeah. yeah. I think I think her reaction was fairly genuine. Yeah. I think it wasn't probably the nicest curry she did. I don't think she was sick. I don't remember being sick. No, I don't know. No, I can't remember anything about that. No, when I watch yeah. it back, I go like... Oh, because <coughs> we, we... I actually no, can't remember Chloe. Team. You do you and Dan were on one team, and Craig and I were on the other, is that right? I, I, just, that I can't remember. remember. I just can't remember anything about that at all. <laughs> just completely just don't quite the right memory, yeah. <laughs> we were there. We were definitely there. Yeah, actually, yeah, I thought we cooked quite a nice curry. I only remember the Universe Challenge. Yeah, where the fans battered us. Yeah, we were rubbish, <laughs> didn't it? Makes me, makes you wonder, like, have good performances when, like, you know, you're stepping into the shower, and uh, people can tell you what time it is on the clock. Yeah, I'm sure you got a rip in the pit, are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's on the clock? If you could have a go at playing any of the other characters before main parts, who would you love to have a go at playing? Chris can play as a whole. Yeah, you can do the whole thing. You can do it all. Um, well, I can, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, in an episode of Red Wall, You've got Lister sitting there going, Yeah, I want to get back to Earth. So, what I want to do is get back to Earth at some stage. What am I going to do, man? And the cat comes and goes, There's that little Zaratist there. I'm sick of my nipples and things in. And then Brighton comes and goes, Sir, so I found a, uh, a nail cutter which has something rather interesting in it. It's me. It's me. And then uh, I come in, Aliens. Maybe Aliens. And then something happens and it's over. <laughs> I don't know why we probably turn it up. <laughs> but uh, I do. you know, we, we have been asked this question quite recently before. And I said, well, oh, I'm a natural perfectly to play the cat. Um, I would like to have a go. Well, really, not, either. Um, I, I quite like the sort of the Brighton, the words. I would like to learn them. And I would like to be a rubber. But I do like the dialogue that he comes out with. I don't think I could do justice to some of the list of stuff. But, uh, um, I know, but to be fair, he doesn't land them either. <laughs> <laughs> I've had, to, I've had a go at Lister anyway in um, Thanks yeah. for the Memory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and, bod- and Body Swap. Body Swap. Body Swap. Body Swap. Yeah. Yeah. That was very fun. Uh, I, um, I'd like to be quite very good. Only because it's stopping moaning about the mask for a week. Just with the swap of the I'm trying to get Doug to write an episode where Crichton has a dream and he's the only human and me, River and Cat are robots. And, uh, and he's uh, seriously considering it. So good. Cool. Only for one week. Only for one week. Only for one week. Yeah, yeah. Not for 20 years. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, oh, I, don't, I, don't, I couldn't pay anyone else. I can't do anything. I can barely do, I can't even do quite, you know, so I, could, I wouldn't mind trying to do the river salute, but, you know, it wouldn't be as good. I reckon you'd, I reckon you'd do it, you'd, you'd be a sucker for a mixed race scouse mega. I think you'd pull that off with a plop, because you're very working class. Um, okay, not to any pressure on you, sir, but this is the final question of the session. Okay, um, Throughout the years you've been playing the characters, I was just wondering if they rubbed off on you in real life. Sorry, uh, did you get that? Oh no, can you, just, can you repeat it? Sorry, just write out close. You've been um, playing your characters for many years and ten seasons. I was wondering if they, their character traits have rubbed off on you in real life. Not at all, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not anal. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm not predicting. <laughs> I'm not a tosser. <laughs> I am perfectly normal. <laughs> I am. Aren't I? Yeah. I reckon uh, uh, the other characters, the characters are kind of caricatures of, of some of our personalities. You know, I mean, I do like a drink and I like a, a hot curry. And, you know, and, although my personal hygiene is better. Uh, Robert has a certain 
a bit of a middle class angst. <laughs> 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 when he started, he was very right on. Oh, oh, he was the majority, he was very right on. Very PC. And Chris collects things, you know, he's like, you know, he's got hobbies. Not uh, telegraph poles. Pre-1950 <laughs> <laughs> though. Uh, <laughs> something a little, a little more exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I think though it would be quite good just to have a couple in the front garden. I'd like to see Alex's face as you install a couple of classic telegraph poles. For no reason. But yeah, Wait, I have I get some. Is there a website? Yeah. <laughs> I have been known to probably have more pleasure than most men my age when I see a in our laundry room, a, a pile of very neatly folded tile, towels. It is true. And I love hanging up washing. I do a lot of laundry. So, you know. But I think it's very much that way around. But, but certainly early on, Rob and Doug would overhear us talking. And you'd, you'd, it might not be the next week, but the next series, you'd suddenly hear. Oh, I, I remember it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know as well. It worked stuff into the scripts, yeah. So. Yeah. Alrighty. Okay, everybody's enjoyed yourselves, folks. I think that's been a hell of a talk. Is it not? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, yeah, thank you very much. I have one question for all you fans and possibly yourselves. Series 11? Yeah! Well, what's this space? Well, not this space. <laughs> that this space. What's that space? It's very sad that we couldn't get Danny Gunn. You'll see if we found out there's some captain in front of the stage and that was Sammy just took off. So. <laughs> Okay, just to have another round of applause for three grey and white things up on the show of the evening. Thank you very much, guys. We're going to be back over there if you want to be fair. Thanks. We'll see you okay, people for going out at your exit in the day as if you can go to the exit on the right-hand side of this place. That'd be great.